With the new electoral law also came new challenges by virtue of section 84 subsection 12 of the electoral act 2022 anyone holding a political office must vacate the position before he or she can be eligible to participate in a primary election convention or congress of political parties either as a candidate or as a delegate this provision only covers political appointees and does not extend to elected political office holders or public officers employed to the public service. Also, the period when they should relinquish the position seems to be immaterial. This led to some members of the federal cabinet resigning their positions. Prominent amongst them are the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Gotswi Lakpabio, Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, Minister of Science and Technology and Innovation, Obunaya Onu, State Minister for Mines and Steel Development, Uche Oga, and State Minister for Education, Chukwe Meka Mwajuba. Others, including the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, Women Affairs Minister, Pauline Talen, Chris Ngige, Minister of Labor and Employment, Petroleum Resources Minister for State, Timmy Pierre Silva eventually rescinded their decision to quit the Federal Executive Council and were reinstated. In what appears to be a major oversight in the new legislation, elected party leaders such as the President, National Assembly members and governors were shut out from voting during party primaries. The Senate attempted to amend the provisions in Section 84, Subsection 8 of the Electoral Act 2022 for statutory delegates, that is, all elected to participate and vote in conventions, congresses and meetings of political parties. But that failed as President Buhari didn't sign the new amendment at the expiration of the deadline. Major political parties had to hold their conventions to pick candidates for the next year's presidential elections before the 29th of May 2022, which was the deadline stipulated by the timetable of the Independent National Electric Commission, with only the statutory delegates voting in primaries alongside ad hoc delegates. As such, this is the first time since Nigeria's return to democracy in 1999 that only a handful of party members would have voting rights at the primaries of the parties. Political parties adjusted and party primaries were held all across the country. In the end, 18 presidential candidates emerged from which Nigerians are to elect one amongst them to govern the country next year. They are Prince Malik Ado Ibrahim, Young Progressive Party, Rabi Musa Kwankoso, New Nigerian People's Party, Omoyele Shoure, African Action Congress, Peter Obi, Labour Party, Kola Abiola, People's Redemption Party, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, All Progressive Congress, Atiku Abubakar, People's Democratic Party, Hamza Al Mustafa, Action Alliance, Professor Christopher Imomolen, Accord Party, Dumebi Kachuku, African Democratic Congress, Peter Umeadi, All Progressive Grand Alliance, Okudili Anyajike, National Rescue Movement, Sani Yusuf Yagwaji, Action Democratic Party, Nandi Osita, All People's Party, Adenuga Oluwafemi Boots Party, Adebayo Adewale, Social Democratic Party, Dan Iwanyawu, Zenit Labour Party, and the early female candidate, Ojai Chichi, of the Allied People's Movement. Post-party primary controversies also emerged after the announcement of the elected presidential candidates. Prominence amongst them is that between the runner-up in the main opposition's People's Democratic Party and Governor of River State, Nyesa Wike, who alongside four other governors from the party, have been resolute in their demand for the resignation of the PDP National Chairman, Iyoche Ayu, before they can support the party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. We have had our primaries, and the presidential candidate has been mentioned. But before it was the image, there was the issue of where would the chairmanship go to? Because in our party, the chairman come from either the south, and the president come from north. 
or the president can come from the south, and the chairman will go to the north. The intention of the founding fathers was that to allow for inclusivity, for everybody to participate in the hierarchy of decision making of the party. There is nothing new in politics. And that some people get angry, you know, when things don't go their way and so on and so forth. So we will, we will overcome that. I have every belief that we are going to do that. There is nothing like a wicked camp or a Tiku camp. There is one PDP family. Are you go, is there any plan at all to meet with Wiki 101 for some kind of reconciliation? Why not? I'm open to that. In the All Progressive Congress, litigations from members of the party, especially the former Minister of State for Education, Chukwe Emeka Mwadriba, who on the eve of the presidential primaries had stepped down from the contest, lingered until the courts threw it out. He had alleged that the party primaries that produced Tinubu as the APC's presidential candidate, as well as that of the PDP's Atiku Abubakar, were tainted by corruption and widespread vote buying, adding that the majority of the delegates were bought over with dollars. Hence, his call for the disqualification of both candidates. But a federal high court in Abuja dismissed the suit. The APC also suffered a huge dose of defections by some party stalwarts following the same fate tickets or Muslim Muslim ticket decision by the party's candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu after he settled for Kasim Shatima as his running mate. Top leaders like the former secretary to the government of the Federation, Babachi Alawal, and former speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, amongst others, have since left the party, even as top officials of the President Muhammad Buhari administration, including the Vice President Yemi Sibajo, have been missing in major campaign stops, with majority of those who contested against Tinubu also less visible at the campaigns. What can be a better example of religion in politics than those demonstrated by these governors of APC? Clearly, there is an agenda to politically, religiously, and economically suppress and oppress the Northern Christian. But we are up to the task. We will protect ourselves. We will defend ourselves and we will defend our interests. The PVC and our prayers will be our weapons of choice and we will massively deploy them in 2023. Once we are one, we can bring Nigeria to the clay and a high heel of Africa. I am just determined with this man. My fundamental disagreement with uh, Asiwaju since 2007 was on the issue of Muslim-Muslim ticket. That was my fundamental disagreement and departure politically from Asiwaju. Remember, I came out, out of PDP on the issue of zoning, and together with Asiwaju, we formed uh, ACN and I was given a ticket in Lagos, and he insisted to be my running mate. And I said, no, I'm not going to have a Muslim Muslim ticket. And because of that, he switched his support to the late Umaru Yaradua. Uh, it is also a fact that when Buhari emerged in 2015 in Lagos, I opposed a Muslim Muslim ticket. I opposed it. And my opposition actually reinforced the decision of President Buhari to pick you know, a Christian uh, running mid. So I have all along uh, opposed that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe it's right for a country, you know, uh, like Nigeria, a multi-ethnic, multi-religious country, that there should be uh, balancing of, you know, interests, whether religious or otherwise. The president of the Night Senate, Ahmed Lawal, who also sought to be the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, lost his re-election bid to return to the Senate with an appeals court affirming Bashir Manchina as the APC candidate for Yobe North Senatorial District for next election. Also, 
Peter Obi, who had earlier sought the ticket of the People's Democratic Party, defected to the Labour Party where he emerged as the presidential candidate, but not without an outcry by some presidential aspirants in the party who cried out that they were bullied to step down for him to emerge as a consensus candidate, despite the insistence that there should be a primary election. The Labour Party has since been faced with different controversies, ranging from members of the party's National Working Committee feeling edged out of the party's presidential campaign council, with daggers drawn by the Ogun State chapter of the Labour Party against the national chairman, Julius Abure, and the director general of the campaign council, Doyi Okukwe. Also, Okupe's resignation following his conviction over money laundering charges by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, and sentencing by a federal high court all dumped the party. I don't want to send a note of warning because I know now he, he, he you know, is a user, I mean, a, a boisterous manner. He might be thinking this is just a shy play. It is not a shy play. Drop out your Okupe. I want to make it very clear, clear to you that you are still to be a member of this party and every available means, every, uh, every lawful available means we will use against you with your cohort. You can never come back to this party. We will not sit down with you because you have disobeyed our constitution. I'm not saying I'm not going to spend money for campaign. I'm not going to say I'm not going to buy lunch for people and everything. But I've never, knowingly, in all my talks with Juan Kosu and anything, offered any money. The people who are funding me, I'm happy that I, I've, I've actually set up a team to oversee all donations and support. Not because I'm defending comments by my brother, my brother is the brother, I remember my brother, we're very close, I remain prayerful for him. For other things which I didn't succeed, God has given him opportunity to do it and succeed. For me, for me, yes. So if there's anything pending, governance is, governance you don't finish. People are still in government in America. So you stop where you stop, other people will continue from there. In the African Democratic Congress, the ADC, the presidential candidate Dumebi Kachuku was expelled by the rough who led National Working Committee of the party three months after his emergence. The decision has since been challenged and a court ruling in favour of the candidate has been obtained. It reaffirmed, first of all, my faith in the judiciary. Mm. Secondly, for our supporters who were not clear about the role of INEC in all of this and what was happening and didn't want to waste their efforts in backing the wrong horse. They now realize that it makes sense to stay on track and focus on what's right. And it's a real moral boost, I would say that. With the next general elections barely two months away, political observers say the year 2022 was quite eventful in the political scene, but Nigerians are optimistic about the next general elections, especially the fact that they have a chance to vote in the next leader who they say must be willing, able and capable to tackle the myriads of challenges currently bedeviling the nation. Amaka Ude Walker, Arise News.